So good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, where we're going to be looking at making the most of Meta Business Suite, which I have to say, I feel like when I'm running any other workshop outside of this um, webinar, I'm always talking about Meta Business Suite and how much I love it and all of the amazing properties that it has to offer. So I love I love this webinar. I, I love Meta Business Suite. And I love being able to share it with you all. So really exciting. So just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Um, today's session is being recorded. And if you want to review the recording, um, you simply go to the Business Station YouTube channel and you can find it on there. So that's available to you. No worries. Um, the webinar will run for just under an hour. So we will finish on time. Um, and if you have any questions throughout the webinar as I'm going, there is a chat box, which I will have open and also a QA, and a um, which I'll have open. And I'll keep my eye on those as I'm training so that if you have a question, I can answer them as we're going. Um, I always find it more relevant to answer whilst we're in the training rather than leaving them at the end. So please don't be shy. Pop them in the little Q&A session or pop them in the chat. I'm just going to move my little chat over so I can see it on my screen as well. Awesome. Excellent. All right, um, a little bit about me. Hi, I'm Sarah. Uh, I, I run my own company called Online Social Butterfly, and I've been an advisor and trainer with Business Station via the ASBAS program for the last four years. Um, and in that time, I have had the great pleasure of working with literally thousands of business owners just like yourself. And today's session is actually funded by the federal government through the ASBAS program, which is why it is free for you to attend. And at the end of today's webinar, I'll tell you a little bit more about the program and how you can access experts like myself to do one-on-one -on -one sessions with us at a really low cost. And I have to say, having been an advisor, I've used all my sessions to work with other advisors on our team. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for you to grow your confidence in digital marketing. And I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you all. Um, my background, I've been running my own business for over a decade now. And prior to that, I worked for 15 years in corporate marketing and communications. I've worked across all ranges of businesses from large multinationals, not-for-profit, all levels of government, local, state, and federal. Um, and I've worked in franchises. I think none of that taught me how to run my own small business because I was in marketing. And it means I had lots of money to spend. And when I started my own company, there's no marketing budget. So it's been really interesting to learn to apply my skills and to help you as small business owners make the most of whatever budget that you have, which I love. Um, I am very well qualified, um, mainly because I'm a total study nerd and I love I love marketing. I love communications. It is my been my whole career. And um, I did just, it was a year ago yesterday that I graduated with my master's degree in um, digital comms, which is cool. So if you'd like to connect with me personally, you're most welcome to do so. You can find me at Online Social Butterfly. And I am mostly hanging out on Facebook and Insta. If you connect with me on LinkedIn, please be patient. I never use that platform. It will take me a while to connect back. So don't be offended if I do. All right, so we're going to jump in and chat a little bit about Meta um, and what is that company name and what does it mean? So Meta was a rebrand that Facebook as a company underwent uh, about 18 months ago now. And they underwent that because the name Facebook as a parent company did not reflect the brands which it had in its portfolio. So as you can see, these are the key brands that it has. So Facebook being the biggest um, and obviously the number one social media platform globally, it has 2.7 billion monthly active users. Um, out of 8 billion on the planet. So it's a lot of people that are looking at Facebook at least once a month. Um, really, really big. And Instagram was something that they acquired back in 2012. So they've owned it for a long time. Uh, it runs very much um, sort of separately. A lot of people don't realize Meta owns it. Um, a hugely successful social media platform, adding lots of different features all the time. Messenger is considered a separate social media platform and it is run like a separate company within the Meta um, company. And with Messenger, most of us think it's part of Facebook because in Facebook, if you click on the little Messenger section, we think, oh, that's part of Facebook, but it actually opens an app and it's considered a separate platform. So, you know, again, very, very successful. WhatsApp was something they acquired several years ago and really to give them dominance in the messaging space. Um, and if you don't use WhatsApp, you're really, really lucky because it's something that um, allows people to connect with you. You will have noticed on both Facebook and Instagram, they're encouraging you to connect your WhatsApp, which means that people can message you through that platform, as well as Messenger, as well as your mobile, as well as your email. 
it's a lot. I'm resisting it, to be honest. I find it very overwhelming when people message me at all places and something pops up on my phone. I was like, where did that come from? So I'm resisting WhatsApp at the moment. I use it personally. Um, and I know when I was at university, um, a lot of the students love it. It's very well integrated. They always have WhatsApp groups for your study groups. Um, it is a great platform if you want to make free international calls and also connecting with people outside of Messenger. Now, Oculus, which they are rebranding to be called Meta, um, so it's going to be currently called Meta Oculus, and they're going to eventually drop that, and it will just be called Meta. And this includes the hardware and the software that allows you to do that VR, so virtual reality. And if you haven't seen this or understand it, when um, Mark Zuckerberg announced um, in September 2021 the rebrand of Facebook to Meta, he also announced that they're working on, in the background, something called the Metaverse. And this is a really exciting proposition where we will change the way in which we interact as human beings. Now, sadly for him, they have poured billions of dollars into the metaverse and still do not have a working prototype. But if you're wondering what that will look like, and I'll pop it in the chat so you can see it, I highly recommend you watch the movie Ready Player One. Uh, I think it's on Netflix. And it gives you an understanding of where virtual reality is heading and where it is heading in terms of how we as human beings will interact. And it's really interesting. So Ready Player One, fantastic movie that explains VR and where it's going. And interestingly, when that movie was made, it was made way before Mark Zuckerberg announced the metaverse, has a lot of parallels to, you know, a wealthy billionaire, a tech billionaire, um, creating his own virtual world, all those kind of things. So very, very interesting concept now that we know Zuckerberg is creating the metaverse. Um, what it will do, it's not just for gaming. Um, and we have um, we have VR headsets in our home. We're a very nerdy gaming family. But my husband and I watched um, VR movies on it. Really interesting experience. But where it will really change is in the way in which we interact. So right now, you can all see me. I can't see any of you. And so my experience is quite restricted. If we were, if I was training in a, a virtual reality space, like a virtual classroom, what that would look like is that I would have a little avatar of myself. She would be thinner and taller and younger. <laughs> and I would be standing, my little um, avatar would be standing in front of a classroom and you would all be seated and you would have on all your VR gear and you could put your hand up and ask a question. It would be like being in a real classroom, but with our little avatars, which are a digital representation of ourselves. So this is coming and don't think this is thousands, like, you know, it's so far away that it doesn't bear thinking about. It is coming. It partially exists. And know that it's going to change the way in which we interact as human beings, the way in which do, we do advertising as business owners. So big changes are coming. And if you're not across it, please check it out because it is so much closer than you think it is. And when we got our VR headsets last year as a family, I was just blown away by what we can currently do in the VR universe, as it were. All right, so those are the brands inside the Meta portfolio. And as you can see, it makes really good logical sense that Meta rebranded to call itself that from Facebook because Facebook does not capture those five key brands that it has. It is always looking to make acquisitions, I think, at the moment because they're so focused on the metaverse. They've probably got a lot of money tied up in that. So we won't see them announcing any acquisitions just at the moment, I would think. I'm not a stockbroker, so don't take that as gospel advice. All right, so we're going to actually jump over to my um, Meta Business Suite, and I'm going to show you what that looks like from there. So if you can give bear with me for a second, I'm just going to stop my screen share, and I'm just going to share the screen in front of me, and we're just going to jump over to my Facebook to start with. So let me just pull the chat back so I can see you all. Great. Excellent. So what you're currently looking at is my um, Facebook page. And as you can see on the top right, I'm logged in as myself. Facebook have made quite a few changes with their interaction. You can switch between your personal profile and your business page. I'm not loving it, um, but hopefully it will get easier the more we get used to it. So to get to Meta Business Suite, there are a few ways in which we can do that. On the left-hand menu on your home screen, you can access it here under Meta Business Suite. See, there's a little menu there. If I change on the top right from Sarah to Online Social Butterfly, I can log in through my Facebook business page as well. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, also keep in mind that Meta Business Suite has both a, um, an app and a web browser version. Today, we're going to be looking at the web browser because obviously it's way easier for me to train screen sharing my web browser than for me to try and hold my phone up and show you the app. It would be quite annoying. So let's just scroll to the top. 
And as you can see at the top of the page, it shows my cover image. This is my cover image on my Facebook page. And it shows me that I've got a business page and an Instagram account, and both of them are linked in Meta Business Suite. Now, I would strongly suggest that first step that you do when you're setting up Meta Business Suite is to connect both your Instagram and Facebook page so that then you can treat this like a mothership that manages both of those platforms, both of those profiles, and makes things a lot more streamlined and easier for you. And I have to say, I use this all the time. I love it as a tool. I do love, I am a numbers nerd and I do love being able to see all of those numbers and things as well. So we're going to start on the homepage here and this is like an overview of your account. So you can see um, this is my page. It gives me a little snapshot. It gives you a to-do list. Now I love this because sometimes, like I said, you get very overwhelmed with social media and you're just like, I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm missing people messaging me. I feel like this is not happening. What do I need to do? So your to-do list is a great place to start because it tells us this is what you need to do. Now, to be fair, I was up early this morning and I have updated and got on top of all of my messaging for the morning, which is great. But if I had some um, people who had DM'd me on Insta or PM'd me on my Facebook business page, those messages would be sitting on my to-do list as action items. But because I have done it, they're no longer sitting there. So it's all good good. And I have to say, I really love that because like I said, the messages pop in everywhere and you're just like, I don't know what to do to keep up. It's hectic. <laughs> and I hope you're all noticing these are updating in real time. Um, so we're going to show you how to set goals as well. So these are my to-do lists. There's some posts that I've left as a draft. I might have some comments and some leads. Now I have leads showing because um, I have an ad running that uses a lead form. So please note that if you don't have ads and you're not using lead forms, that particular um, component here may not be on your to-do list. So don't think yours is broken. It just simply means that you're not using that feature in Meta Business Suite. As we scroll down the page, um, it talks about, would you like to manage your marketing content? And it's got some ideas for you there. And then it's got, um, so this is kind of like what's new. And I use that term loosely because what's new is usually not that new. As you can see, um, they updated that in June last year, May last year, March last year. So there are not rapid changes happening in this section. Um, it's all about what's happening to MBS and what's the latest thing that you need to see. So you don't need to look at that all the time. I wouldn't be getting too anxious about that at all. So if we go onto our left-hand menu, today in the webinar, what I'm going to do is work through this menu here to allow you to understand some of the features. Please bear in mind that today's webinar is a little bit like a whistle-stop tour because I'm just giving you a taste of what's possible, um, but know that there are many features in here that you can really dive into. And things like leads and that are really, really useful tools, but we won't be able to cover that in a one-hour webinar. But you're going to get a taste of the main features and how I think it could be used in your business to help you simplify and streamline um, both your Facebook business page and your Instagram profile. All right. So the first one I'm going to start with is notifications. Now, if I click on this, it just does a little pop out menu and it tells me what's been going on on my account. So it says here, someone's commented on a post, someone's commented on a link, I've responded myself and all these kind of things. Now, this then allows you, if I was to click on this, I could then go to that post, see what Veronica had commented and respond to her comment. Now, one of the things I would say to you on social media is a, a kind of the worst thing that you can do to your audience is allow them to comment on your content and not respond to it. It is incredibly rude. Um, like it, It's like if you were having a conversation with someone, and they asked you a question and you just turned away and ignored them. So do keep in mind that notifications is a great place to go. I try and go there at least a couple of times a day just to make sure I keep on top of people's comments and respond to them in a timely manner. You don't need to write a beautiful essay back. You just need to say thanks for your comment, something really brief, okay? But just know that it's a really good way to build community if you're able to respond to comments regularly. So that's my notification. So I'm just going to click that off to get rid of it. And we're then going to go to the, our next menu item down, which is our inbox. And this is kind of cool because it has some great features in it that are going to all lighten your load. And that is exactly what we want. So here's the thing. We'll just go to um, <laughs> apologies for all the messages. Um, that's my, actually one of my friends were just chatting. So don't mind that. She's also an advisor on the program. 
So under messages, as you can see, I have a lot across the top, what we call a unified inbox. And this allows me to manage both my Instagram DMs and my Facebook page PMs all in the one location. Really simple, really efficient. And I really love this because rather than, and I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a lover of my phone <laughs> in terms of typing. I think I might be too old. My eyesight's not as good as it should be. And I would much rather respond to people on my desktop where I can type properly. So this really makes that easy rather than having to go to Instagram, log into the app, go to my DMs and respond to people. I can do it all here on my desktop or my phone or on my laptop. So I can go to Messenger. I can go to Instagram. You can actually integrate your email. I'm not doing that because like, I don't want Meta controlling my whole life. I still like to have something going on. So keep that in mind. But what I do want to show you is over here on the right-hand side. So this person's asked me a little bit of information and I can actually mark her as a lead. So she would go into my lead forms and I can add some information about it. So I could add a label and I could call her like a potential customer, for example. And then you can manage your inbox and put tags on people just like you would with your normal emails. Now, if your inbox is very busy, I would highly recommend that you do that. What I do want to show you today is the automations. And that's up here on this little um, box, as you can see in the towards the top right hand side. So we're going to click on that and I'm going to show you how we use it. Apologies, I'm just moving the chats around so I don't miss any of your questions on the Q&A or the chat. I'll just keep moving it to one side so I can see what I am doing. So under automations, there are a whole lot of options for you to try out. Now, I would strongly suggest that you set some of these out because these are going to make your life so much easier. And I do this for several reasons. One, I do not want to be replying to messages outside of business hours. I really want to kind of hold my boundaries. Um, I run my business so that I can be present for my family and my kids get home from school. I don't want to feel like I have to be sitting on Facebook constantly replying to messages. So if you message me outside of business hours, you will get an out of office message and it will have a really nice clear answer. Similarly, if you message me on the weekends and I can also set an away as well. Um, if you don't have the automation showing, um, Sue, I would recommend that you look at if you're looking at it on desktop, I have no idea why it wouldn't be showing otherwise because this is a this is not a beta tested feature. It has existed for many years inside the platform. So um, yeah, sorry, I don't know the answer to that. Um, but if you go to inbox and have it at the top, it's definitely there. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So with our automations that we can choose from, as you can see, there's lots here that you can try out. And I don't necessarily have them all set up, okay, because it's a lot. But I have the ones set up that I think I my business needs. So the first one that I have set up is my frequently asked questions. And this is set up for Facebook and Insta. See, it's got the both icons. So I can go and edit this. Now, the frequently asked questions are incredibly useful. If people ask you the same question all the time and you're like, gosh, if they could just get an answer without waiting for me to reply. Now, in reality, in my business, I am very busy during the day. So I coach people a lot and I run training and workshops and I'm often out training face to face. So I don't get back to people in a timely manner. And I think that that's crap, if I'm honest, because I want people to feel like I care about them. So setting up the frequently asked questions means that someone can see the question that they need an answer to. Get, it, get the answer instantly without waiting for me to get back to them, which may be several hours. So I love frequently asked questions. And it's so funny when I sit down sometimes towards the end of the day and I look at my inbox and I'm like, oh, the little bot's been working hard doing its job for me. So it's really good. Oh, I'm so glad. So it's really good for people to be able to self-respond self because, and we've done this ourselves. We sit down and we're like, I want to get this sorted. I'm going to send a message. And you're like, Dum -de -dum, waiting for them to reply. So the capability of someone to reply to you instantly is really, really good. So I know what questions people ask me all the time. The first one they ask me is about the program. And um, Belinda said, how does it differ from the FAQs on your website? It's completely different because these are questions that people can get an instant response to because you're not, if I'm on your messenger, I'm not going to your website necessarily. And these questions are very specific in that they relate to 
questions that people ask you through Messenger. So on your website, you might have things like an FAQ section that's quite generic and broad in relation to your business. And it's often um, technical things like what are your terms, what are your refund terms, stuff like that. No one is sending you a message like that through Messenger. It's usually about very specific things like how can I work with you? What's your next available appointment? That kind of thing. So the questions that I get asked the most are, For this program, which is called ASVAS, sometimes called Digital Solutions, (laughs) it's confusing, do you need help booking in with me? So if I click on that question, um, I can actually edit it. So this is the question that people could potentially ask, and it kind of covers all of the things that they might ask. And then I have an answer, and it says this program is run by Business Station. Here's the link to the form. If you're having issues, please call them. Don't call me because I can't help. And this is actually really great because it also allows you to put um, in a button where people can go directly to that link to book in with me. Now, the great thing about that is people ask me questions all the time about this program. One, how do I book? How do I request you? And what if I can't, like, what if the system says I'm not eligible? And this answers all their questions because if they're not eligible, they I can't help them and I want them to ring business station. So this here is one of my most used frequently asked questions because It helps solve people's problem. And I love it because often by the time I sit down towards the end of the day and I see this, people are like, I've rung business station and it's all sorted out and I'm booked in with you. And I'm like, if they had had to wait for me to reply to tell them that information, I potentially could have lost them as a customer. So having frequently asked questions really keeps on top of the potential questions that people are messaging you about and giving them a really good customer service experience. It's exactly what they want. Um, Oh, good. Uh, Thank you, Alicia, for commenting. So Alicia just said um, she was looking for her automation button and she found it. It says, see what's new next to the messaging insights at the top. Thank you so much for sharing that because I obviously use this feature. It isn't new. I don't know why they're doing that. It's probably because it's new to you. So apologies. That was a little bit techie for you all. So that's my frequently asked questions. And I would encourage you to set those up and encourage you to think about what do people message you and ask you? Because if it is the frequently asked questions, like you said on your website, Belinda, you could actually put in a frequently asked questions like got a question and then you could put a button in saying visit my FAQs on my website. That could be your question. (laughs) But uh, my suspicion is that people ask different questions because they think that you're going to respond. The FAQs on your website are very generic. All right. So the away message is fabulous. If you're away on holidays, you're not, you're not in the office that day, something like that. So then you can set it up to set those expectations. Um, And that's really, really good to do that because one of the things that I want to be clear about with people is we do not need to be available 24 seven to ensure that we convert potential customers into customers. Okay. And I think that we can have a little bit of anxiety around, but if I don't respond, they're going to go somewhere else. And actually, it's not necessarily true because what people want to know is, A, you got their message, and B, when on earth are you going to get back to them? So when I have my away message set, and I have mine set up to um, tell me when I'm available and when I'm not available, so I have it turned off outside of office hours. So like I said, if you message me at, say, 6 p.m., you will get an auto response bounce back to you saying, we're currently closed and we'll respond the next business day. And so what I have done by doing that is set very clear expectations around A, when you can expect a response, and B, just reassured you that you've actually got your question, like I've received your inquiry. And I also have on that, I say to people, if your inquiry is urgent, please email me and I put my email address in, mainly because in my inbox here, you can pop down the list very quickly and I could miss it. And I actually missed a lead the other day. She had messaged me on a Saturday and got the order of responders. And I didn't see it till about the Wednesday because I have such a busy inbox. And she would need someone urgently. And if she had emailed me, it would have hit my inbox and my assistant would have got straight onto that. So just a little tip for you. If you have a busy inbox, you might need help to manage that in your business. As I said, there's lots of different choices that you can turn on. You can see I haven't necessarily got all of them turned on, but these ones that they say suggested for you are kind of cool because they add new things in. And I've actually just turned this one on. If someone leaves me a positive review, um, I actually send them a little automated response saying, thank you so much for your review. It really helps grow my business. I just have this nice message on it. So again, it's giving people like that instant feel good that they've done something nice for you. So again, really helpful to set these up and really 
create some systems in your business because we want to be busier, but we don't want to be losing leads or not giving people a good customer service experience when they first inquire with us. And I have to say those FAQs, um, I would lose a lot of business if I didn't have those set up because sometimes I just can't get to things the same day. It's just the the nature of the beast. Like yesterday I trained all day and I had clients. And when I finished at six o'clock, I was like, not doing that now. I'm too tired. And so I got up early this morning and did it. But if you hadn't got the help that you wanted, you might've gone somewhere else and been grumpy. And I don't want that to be people's first experiences of interacting with my business. All right. So that's enough about inbox. And as you can see, this is one of the reasons I love MBS is because the features that it has in here that allow us to automate and give great customer service at the same time. It's like the dream, isn't it? All right. Okay. So we're going to go to our next menu item. And as I said, this is leads and this may or may not exist for you, depending on if you're using lead forms in your business. So I have a lot of leads. You can see I have a lot of ads running and I collect leads through it. So really, really helpful to see those. Um, I won't go into this in great detail because I suspect a lot of you aren't using it, but just know that remember on my inbox. So that inquiry that I had, I could have converted this lady here into a marked as a lead and she would then pop into my lead inbox there. And um, to be fair, my assistant does manage this. She downloads this all the time when I'm running ads and she contacts people. So that's really helpful. All right, we're going to move to um, content. Now, I have to say, this is one of the things I think is a wee bit clunky in here because content and planner have a lot of overlap. Um, content shows you what have you posted recently and how is it performing? So you can see that I put out a post this morning because I was training yesterday in Kalamunda. I shared it. This is how the post went. And it tells you how all of your posts are going in terms of performance. And you can see that it shows me Facebook and Insta posts all in the one location. I don't use this a lot. I don't consider it to be particularly helpful. If I want to know how things are performing, I go to insights. If I want to create content, I go to the planner, but I just wanted you to see that it was there. The next one is our shopping feature or commerce. I forget they keep changing the name of it, commerce. Now, Commerce is something that if you have a physical product, I something that people can touch and feel and buy, I cannot stress enough how important it is that you have um, commerce set up. So Suze just said leads, contact and commerce do not show up on the left-hand side. So leads will only show up if you're using that feature, Sue. So don't worry about that. It's, it's part of um, meta ads or Facebook ads. Again, the commerce won't necessarily come up if your business does not look like they have a physical product. So the little um, algorithm and the little bots trawl your content to see if that's come up. So I can't have a commerce shop and I have tried and see how it tells me that I've got some issues. The issue is I don't sell physical products. I sell digital products. So it always puts these warnings up when I get here. So it won't necessarily have you show them um, content Um, So you put contact and um, content. I have to say content used to be called posts and stories and that's updated in the last week. So some of this is a bit of a moving feast Um, content. Yeah. So don't worry if you haven't got content, it's useless. So (laughs) we will come to planner. So just to recap, commerce, very important for you to set this up if you have a physical product that people can purchase via an online shop. So we're talking about an e-commerce business. So for example, if I sold iPhone cases that you could go to a website and purchase, I have digital products, so I can't do this. Similarly, if you're a service-based business, you cannot use this feature either. But the research is definitive on this in terms of physical products. So once you've got commerce set up, this has come a long way over the years and it integrates beautifully with your website. It's like a very simple integration with all of the major um, commerce platforms. So Shopify, WooCommerce, WordPress, Squarespace, all um, Wix even all integrate beautifully to meta commerce. And what it allows you to do and particularly useful on Insta, it allows you to tag your products when you create a post. And I have to say, I love and hate this feature because it makes me spend money that I wouldn't otherwise spend. But it is very handy as a business owner because the research tells us if we tag products, people are more likely to buy them. So if you don't have this set up, please move ahead and set it up. It's very simple and straightforward. You just click next, next, and it tells you and prompts you what to do. Um, It used to be kind of techy and awkward, but it is much simpler now. 
All right, planner. I hope everyone has planner because it is probably my favorite tool inside um, MBS. And it is something that I use a lot and I really, really love it. So um, good, it's gone away. So this shows you all of my content that has gone out. Now, I do use a third-party scheduling tool, mainly because I want to schedule to all platforms like Google Business, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Insta all at the same time. And obviously, MBS only lets me schedule Facebook and Instagram. However, it is incredibly useful to see what's coming up and to see how to use it. But there are lots of uses for this, and I'm going to show you what some of those look like. So as you can see, I can view all of my past content. Now, if I had created some content in here, and I'm going to click on this post as an example. Now, this post here was posted on Facebook, and it's all about like a workshop that I've got coming up, and I can see all of the content for that. So I can go and edit this post here, so I can edit it retrospectively. I can duplicate it and repost it. So if I was like, oh, people didn't see this workshop, I need to put it out there again. I can repost it. I can see how it's performing lots of little actions that I can do and really, really simple. Um, I will just say, and then I can go and view it on Facebook if I chose to as well. Um, do not boost posts. I'm just going to drop that in right now. If you want to be running paid ads, I recommend you use Ads Manager, formerly called Facebook Ads Manager. They have now just dropped it to Ads Manager and more than likely they'll start to call it Meta Ads Manager. And you'll get much better results if you run an ad than if you boost a post. So I don't go into that today, but just know that that's not the way forward. So as you can see, I can look at the last week. I can look at the last month worth of content. Sorry, I do post a lot. This is kind of my business. So there is a lot of posts in there, as you can see. And I can look at any one of them and, and look at it in some detail. But what I really love the planner feature for is the ability to create content. So if we go up to the top right, it allows me to create. And it's as you can see here, I can create a normal post, which is for Facebook and Insta. I can create a story for Facebook or Insta. Now, I'm just going to click on this. Um, you can create reels, but it was only for Facebook a few days ago. Let's just see if it's changed. <laughs> I don't know why they've allowed us to schedule reels on Facebook and not Instagram. Ah, oh, it looks like I can share a reel to both now. Woohoo! That has literally changed in the last week. I was training this class last week and you couldn't do it. And I was like, ah. Oh. So you can currently schedule reels to both Facebook and Insta through MBS exciting happy days <laughs> that's made my day um, if you're not using reels please note that meta as a company made an official announcement that they are going to use their algorithm to push out video real content to their audience so if you're not using it you're going to not ride that wave that the algorithm is pushing we can um publish content across different pages that we manage and we can create ads in here. Again, not my preference to create ads in here because this is an ad center. We want to use the ads manager. So we're going to start with posts. Um, actually, I'll start with I'll start with stories. You've only got the first three items. I suspect because that's I'm a heavy advertiser and I do a lot of stuff through here. So don't stress if you don't have everything. But let's start with stories because it's okay. And I always say to people, if this allows you to publish content in a more consistent manner, don't stress about the fact that it doesn't have all the features that we might like to be using in the platform such as Insta or Facebook. So if I wanted to publish a story, and I'll just grab something off my desktop. Um, what do I have here? Oh, I've actually, well, that's a video. Hang on. <laughs> um, let me just see what I've got. Sorry. This is a lot of stuff that I've downloaded. Um, it's going to be the wrong dimension, so it's not going to be very happy, but that's okay. You get the idea. So I can currently select, because um, story is obviously portrait, and the post that I'm just creating is more of a square, as you can see. So this is about the chat GPT class that I've got. Now, I can add up to 10 images here, and I can crop it. I can add text, and I can add stickers. The swipe up link is only available on Instagram if you have more than 10,000 fans. And if you do, fabulous. So it doesn't allow me to do a lot of the features like I can't add GIFs, I can't add stickers, I can't add polls. But what it does allow me to do is schedule a story and walk away from my business and forget. <laughs> okay. So if it makes your life easier to schedule stories in here, despite the fact it doesn't have all the features, then please use this because we don't want to spend our life on social media. And if it makes life easier that you can schedule them, then let's get that done. 
Now, what it does show, it gives you a preview for both of them. Um, it does also tell me active times. Now, I'm not loving this because I find a lot of people I speak to says that the best time to post on Facebook is 6 p.m. for everybody. Now, that cannot be true because we have different audiences who live in different time zones. And I, I, I see a lot of client accounts and they all have the same data. So I don't use that data. I don't find it accurate. But what I can do is I can schedule it. So I can click on schedule and I can then choose, do I want to schedule it, for say, for the weekend at that time? And I can choose a different day and time for Insta as well. And again, if scheduling helps you create content more regularly, please use it. All right, so I'm going to cancel that. And I'm going to jump back to the top right-hand side. And I'm going to jump into creating a post. Now, this again, um, if you're not using um, any scheduling tools, I would really recommend you check this out because it is free and it is available on MBS um, web browser and on the app as well. Now, as you can see, and this is what I kind of like, I can schedule to Facebook and Insta at the same time and I can cross publish to some groups as well. And I can cross publish to up to three groups on any given post which is pretty fabulous because it means that lots of people are going to see my content. So I could just write here, um, come join my free workshop. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't type while everyone's watching me about chat GPT and creating content. All right, so there's my little post and I'm going to add a picture to go with that. So I'm going to add a photo. I'm going to upload it from my desktop. And we will go to that little bad boy there, <laughs> which we used before. And um, this is the chat GPT class that I'm running for business station soon. So as you can see, I've got a picture, I've got a post. Now, really good, but what we often want to do is customize things for different platforms. So I can customize it for Facebook and Instagram by turning this on. And what customizations you want to do are really, um, also someone's just asked, sorry, Belinda, would you recommend using an external scheduling tool instead of Meta? Um, if you're only scheduling to Facebook and Instagram, absolutely not. Um, I only use a third-party scheduling tool because I schedule, as I mentioned, to Facebook, Insta, Google Business, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. So I'm scheduling to five platforms. So if I was using MBS, I could schedule to two, and then I would still have to faff about with those other platforms. So if you're just scheduling to these two platforms, MBS is your new best friend, okay? Um, you do not need to be paying for anything else. This is such a good scheduling tool. So when we are customizing for Facebook and Instagram, there are two things that I specifically want you to customize. The first one is hashtags. And it really irritates me when I see Facebook posts that have got 30 hashtags on them because they've shared from Insta to Facebook. Facebook have announced and made it very clear that they will penalize the reach of your post if you use too many hashtags. And the optimal number of hashtags is four to five, okay, on Facebook. So you only want to be adding four to five to your Facebook post. And on Instagram, the maximum number of hashtags you can use is 30. And I recommend you use 30 on every single post, okay? So um, I'll just pop it in the chat for you all to see. So four to five hashtags on Facebook and 30 on Instagram. So you can all remember that and don't need to ask me again. So I know that you probably just did a big gulp when I said 30 because it sounded like a lot and you're like, oh gosh, I don't know if I've got time to do that. But this is why I love MBS. And even when I'm scheduling in my third-party scheduling tool, I come back to MBS to do my hashtag research because it's so good. So on the bottom right-hand corner, um, there's a little hashtag there. And I can look up hashtags in here. So say I'm talking about chat GPT, which is what the workshop is about. I can then see what hashtags are used on Facebook and Instagram. Now, on Facebook, hashtags are much less important than they are on Instagram. So remember, you're just looking for four to five posts, um, four to five hashtags. But on Instagram, we're looking for that 30. But there are some specific criteria on Instagram. So. I'm just going to pop it in the chat. 
We want hashtags that have been used more than 5,000 times, less than 500,000. And the reason for that is simple. If there's like a hashtag that's got 6 million uses, you are going to get no visibility or traction from that. So keep in mind, we don't want to go right outside those parameters. And I've popped that in the chat so you can make a note of it. So when I go chat GPT, I can see that this one here is a really good one because it's only got 163,000. Um, chat GPT 3, great 10,000. That one's got more than 5,000 because that's the name of the company. Chat GPT AI is the company name. Chat GPT bot, it's a bit low, but I'd probably be tempted to use it just because it's going to give me a little bit of traction. So you can see in about three seconds flat, I've got four hashtags already. And I could then change it to AI, which is what Chat GPT is. Now, the first one's got 9 million posts, probably not going to do a lot for me. And so is that one. But I have to say, because so few people are training in AI at the moment, I would probably use those just because it's going to help me get some traction. So you can see how quickly I can get a whole bunch of hashtags. Getting to 30 is like it's going to take you less than a minute. And the good news is you can use the save button to save these so you can access them later. If I'm happy with those ones I've chosen, I simply hit add and it's then going to appear on my post. So I'll just give it a couple of lines space so it's easier for people to read. So there's my post on Facebook with my hashtags. If I go to Insta, I have to customize them there. So it shows me a preview of what my post looks like. It looks quite nice, actually, <laughs> despite the fact I didn't create that for socials. Um, so it looks all quite good. And remember, on Instagram, 30 hashtags. And the other thing that you want to do in terms of customization is on Instagram, you do not put clickable links in there. So this workshop that I'm running for Business Station, if it was on Facebook, I'd say book your spot now for this free training on AI. And I'd put the link to the workshop that's coming up. If I was on Instagram, there is no point in putting a clickable link on there because one, it will not function as a hyperlink. So people will not be able to press it and go to that destination. And secondly, Instagram really don't want you to use clickable links because they've even deactivated the highlight function where you can copy and paste. So if you put a link in your Insta post, your audience cannot even copy and paste that link. So really you need to put in there to book this workshop, send me a DM or follow the link in my bio. So those are the customizations that you want to have between Facebook and Instagram when you're creating content. So as you can see, it's pretty cool. Um, and I particularly love the ability to do hashtag research in here. I think it is like a hidden secret resource that people are simply not using that is going to save you so much time, but also allow you to create really relevant hashtags with every single post that you are creating. All right, so that's enough about planner, which I'm a little bit obsessed with. The next one down is ads. And as I mentioned, and it's the hint is in the URL, and it's because I teach ads and I'm an ads expert that I know the difference. But as you can see in the URL, I'm in Facebook business, Meta Business Suite. But see this here, how it says ad center. Now, the problem with this is ad center is a kind of like a light version of ads manager. And when I say light, I mean rubbish. <laughs> Because in Ad Center, you simply cannot do the functions that you would like to do if you use Ads Manager. So I do not advocate you use this resource. I recommend that. And if we jump back to my Facebook here, um, on the left-hand side, there's a little resource here that says Ads Manager. I want you to be using that exclusively if you are running ads. If you're interested in learning more about ads, I teach that for Business Station and all my workshops are listed on my Facebook page under the event section. So um, I think I've got a couple coming up in March. Can't remember off the top of my head, but have a look. So we're not using that bad boy at all. The next one, which I do love, is the insights section on my Facebook page and on my Meta Business Suite. And as you can see, as soon as I hit the insights, this little pop-up box appears and it gives me a summary of what has happened over the last seven days on my Facebook and Instagram. So it says, this is how many pieces of content I published. I've got two ads running at the moment. My goals were, and we're going to set these in a second, and I achieved, uh, I could achieve my Facebook goal, haven't achieved my Insta goal. My results in terms of reach, nice, good, strong reach over the last seven days with both of my accounts. Please note, though, that reach includes paid ads and I'm running paid ads. So that number looks massive. I'm not that popular and interesting. It's simply because I have ads running just to keep in mind. So I can then click off this on the top right hand side or I can just go to view or insights. And this again, as you can see in insights, there's a massive amount 
of information available. And if you are not using this information in your business, you're really doing yourself a disservice and you're marketing a disservice. Now, what this tells us is so detailed in terms of information. And I'm going to go through my favorite parts. Um, Oh, it said your ad account had been disabled, Carl. Look, when we get to the end of today's workshop, I'm going to talk about working one-on-one with me. Love to help you fix that because that's my happy place is fixing people's broken ads managers. So always happy to help with that. So this is my an overview of my Facebook and Insta. And the first thing that we're going to do is set some goals. And the goals are honestly just for your kind of benefit. But I, I love numbers so much. And I genuinely believe if we don't set ourselves goals, we don't grow it and we don't measure. So I always set my goals and I set them according to what I think is important. So with my goals over on the right-hand side, I can click on the menu, new goal. And as you can see, I have two choices when it comes to goals. The first one is to grow my reach. And the second one is to grow my followers. Now I generally select followers because hopefully if I'm growing my followers, my content is engaging and I'm growing my reach at the same time. It's entirely up to you which one you want to choose but you can choose them separately for your Facebook page and your Instagram account. I am going to set my goal to grow my followers in the next 28 days. So I click that and then I hit next. Then it says, do you think you're a starter, intermediate or advanced? And now I hit my advanced option. So I'm going to run with that. And it's going to track me over the, from today for the next 28, 28 days. So my goal is to get 66 new page likes in the next 28 days. And in the last 28 days, you can see here, it says I got 53. So it's a wee bit of a stretch target. And I think that's a good thing because we want to kind of push ourselves. So I'm going to set that goal and I'm going to go to Insta and I'm going to set, oh, sorry. Um, I'm just going to set my Insta goal. I should have set them both at the same time. and. Um, The goal for, now I think my Insta goal might've been a bit hard. So I might go, oh no, it doesn't seem as bad. So in the last 28 days, I've got 143 new followers and now I'm going to hit 179. I feel like that's okay. So I'm going to set that goal as well. Now, remember, there's no prize for winning and achieving your goals, but I think that it's really good to kind of um, set yourself some goals and focus in on those things because it just gives you something to work towards. And it also makes sure that we're actively managing our profiles and accounts rather than passively sitting there watching it just float on by. So as you can see on this overview kind of mothership page, it gives me an overview of what's happening with my reach. It gives me an overview of my page followers, and it gives me an overview of what my messaging is like. Now, one of the things I would say to you is if you do not know who your ideal customer is when it comes to marketing, it is incredibly difficult for you to speak to your audience. Now, you have at your fingertips this resource and one other resource that I really want you to consider, and it's another free resource, and it's called Google Analytics, and it is free to install on your website, and it will tell you a huge amount of data about the people that visit your website. And we know in marketing, if you know who you are talking to, it makes it all a lot easier. So the good news is my Google Analytics is consistent with my Insta and Facebook insights. And here's what I know about my audience. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to show you. I know that about 85% of my paying customers are female. Uh, My branding is super girly. (laughs) And my website is very girly and all my language talks to female business owners. So it makes sense that I would be attracting more females. And I know that my audience is generally women aged 35 to 55. So this data, as you can see, look at these two audiences here on both platforms is heavily skewed in that area of women aged 35 to 55. Now, if when I got here, I thought my audience was women aged 35 to 55, but actually my biggest demographic was 18 to 24, there is a disconnect in my marketing. Either I don't know my business well enough to know who my audience is, or the message that I'm putting out there is not landing with who I think my audience is, but it's landing with someone different. Now, ideally, this data here should be really similar to the data that you have on your Google Analytics. And you don't need to look at this all the time, but I definitely want you to be looking at it now and then. It also tells me where my audience is coming from. So you can see on Facebook, a lot of my audience are based based in Perth, which is where I am, but less so on Instagram. And as we scroll down, you can see that a whole bunch of my audience um, 
are based in Australia on Facebook, but on Instagram, much less. Instagram is a much more global platform. And what you want to be realistically asking yourself is if you are a local business that can only service people locally, are you attracting the wrong kind of people who can't actually work with you or buy from you? So again, all of these analytics are really, really helpful. Now, there is a huge amount of data in here, and we simply don't have time to go through all of it. But I consider the audience data some of the most useful in terms of what you can do with your audience and how you can understand it and how you can create your posts and your content and everything about your marketing to speak to your audience, okay? It is so key. And if you take away one thing from today that you're going to go and look at your insights and you're going to compare it with your Google Analytics, then I have done my job because I think that that's going to transform the way in which you do your marketing. Um, as I said, there's lots of other stuff down here. I can review my content, which is why I don't really use um, that content box there, because if I want to review my content, I will do it in here. I can review my messaging, which I sometimes don't want to look at because I know that I'm not doing a brilliant job of that. <laughs> and then I can look at some videos, how that's performing. Um, they have introduced stars on um, both Facebook and Instagram, which means that people can send you stars, which is the equivalent to actual real world money. This isn't something most of us as business owners would use, but definitely something you can consider if you want to become like an influencer or if you want to generate content that you believe people should pay for. Um, music has lots of trends and stuff, which is really helpful if you're big into reels. Um, so lots of information there that you, is at your fingertips that you can access and try out. Um, I can also switch to make sure I'm in the correct ad account, which it looks like I am. So happy days there. Um, those can be quite confusing also. The last thing I want to show you before we wrap up is under all tools, this enormous menu pops out. <laughs> and this is where you can do things on your account that you kind of like, where did that go? So it might be things um, like under your settings, um, who, who, who has an admin on your page and who who is connected to it. So you can manage that in there. Um, you can manage your ad account billing. You can check that your advertising complies with policies. Lots of different features within here. Um, again, managing your comments and your orders is really, really helpful. Um, as I said, you have instant forms and your leads that you can manage in here. So there's lots in here that you can do. And it would probably, I probably need another two hours to go through all of that. But remember, have a little look and have a play and see what would be helpful and relevant for you and your business. All right. So I'm just going to go back to sharing our other screen. Okay. I'll just bring the chat down so I don't miss any of your questions. All right. So um, just to wrap up today's webinar, gosh, it goes fast. <laughs> um, as I mentioned at the beginning of today's workshop, um, this program is run by the federal government and it's delivered here in WA Queensland, Northern Territory by Business Station. The program is going to be wrapping up on the 31st of March. And if you would like to access the program, I strongly recommend that you apply now. Now, the program gives you seven hours of mentorship for $44. This is broken up into three hours of one-to-one -one advisory and four hours of workshops and webinars. And we cover these key areas, which is really focused on you as a business owner, becoming more confident with digital capabilities. Um, Alicia said, do I use hashtags in posts or in ad campaigns? No, I don't use them in ad campaigns because it's not going to grow my reach in ad campaigns because ads are paid to be put in front of people. Sorry for the segue. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. If you would like to work with me as your advisor, I would love to do that. My areas of expertise are obviously Meta. So Meta ads, which is Facebook and Insta, but obviously those other platforms, content and Canva, I will talk all day <laughs> with you. And if you need some help with marketing and digital strategy, that is definitely in my bag as well. I love that kind of stuff. I love campaigns. I love launches. I also have in my business a huge amount of digital products, including online courses, um, memberships and masterminds. So if you're interested in how you create those, I definitely can be your advisor. If I'm not your girl, that's also totally fine. I still recommend you access the program and pop it. don't put me down as your preferred advisor and you'll be connected with one of our team of 30 advisors who'll be able to help and support you. 
So to find that if you're eligible, you simply have to have an ABN registered in Queensland, WA or the Northern Territory, because that's our region. Um, you have to be running a for-profit business and you have to have less than 20 full-time employees. So if you go to the Business Station website, it's on the homepage there, it's called Digital Solutions. Um, and to register through that, um, I will just grab the link so that you can register and then you kind of don't have to wait for it. Um, Carl, if you'd like to register through the program, I will just pop the link in the chat. Um, you're most welcome to register and we can fix some of your issues in a session together. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed today's webinar. I um, apologies if I speak quickly. I get very excited <laughs> um, with, with sharing tools that I know and love in my business all the time. And I hope that you have learned something today. Remember to go back to the um, Business Station YouTube channel to look at the recording and to catch up and watch it as many times as you like. So remember, keep practicing, keep playing. You can't break MBS and they're adding new tools and features all the time. So keep using it because it's going to lighten your load in terms of the busyness that you have in your business. So have a great day and thank you so much for your time today. See you later.